Hello healthy people and welcome to Rossum Healthy. Today I've got a special bean with me, Grant Campbell, an ultra marathoner, an 80 10 10 raw vegan and a health educator. Hi Grant, welcome. Hello Julia. And thank you very thank much you. for taking time out of your busy schedule to come and join our show. It's my absolute pleasure. Thank you. So let's talk about running tips for beginners. Um, let, let, let's cover posture, hand, hand position, foot position and all the, the sort of things that people need to know in order to run in the right way. Sure. I mean, there, there are certainly rights and wrongs of running, but there are also a wide range of styles. So I'm not about to tell anyone this is the right way. If something's working for you, then you know, some people break Olympic records doing something that isn't conventionally seen as a, as a good style. But certainly when you're running, you want to be relaxed. You don't want to waste energy with any tension. You don't want to resist the motion of your body. So arms, you're going to drive your arms more the faster speed you run. So me as an ultra marathon runner, I don't drive my arms so hard, but they're still, still moving back to around here and forward to there. My hands are just relaxed. Sometimes I just let them go limp. Like you see some marathon runners, they're just kind of, their hands are just kind of falling everywhere. But uh, you, just, you don't want to waste energy holding tension. You want your shoulders to be relaxed, you want your hips to be relaxed. Basically when you're running you're going from, there's a book called uh, The Pose Method of Running where you just they concentrate on going from a, one pose to the next pose. So you're in this pose with a, a bent knee, bent at the hip a little, and you're sort of falling forwards, leaning forwards from the ankle. And you're just going from that pose to the pose, the same pose on the other foot and, and everything in between is just a transition. You're landing just behind the ball of the foot is, is generally the, the accepted way, way to land. Running in minimal footwear or completely barefoot teaches you a lot of good technique. Children naturally sort of practice walk, they learn to walk, they just kind of fall forward and take a few steps and fall forward mm -hmm. and catch a few steps. And that's kind of what you want to be doing when you run, you want to be using gravity to take you forwards. If you're upright, You've got to use a lot of muscles to drive you forward. That's not, not so efficient. And certainly for sprinting, there's, there is a lot of muscle involved in moving forward. For ultra marathon running, it more, moves more into the realm of, of just falling forward and being super efficient. I'm just picking my feet up off the ground behind me, which is much, much more efficient than like, if I do this for a minute. And would that be the same for 5Ks, 10Ks? Yeah, it's, it's different, different gradients. A sprinter is going to, to have a very high knee lift going to use the hip flexors and, and use, you know, so they're using more muscle than me who's just falling forwards and just lazily picking my feet up behind me and just shuffling along for you know, 36 hours or uh, and there's much less impact much less impact when you're just picking your feet up behind you like this mm -hmm. and, and going mm -hmm. like mm -hmm. that so and in terms of the foot position what sort of what sort of uh, position do you recommend well I recommend landing just behind the ball of the foot just and then the rest of the foot comes down pretty flat, uh, you know, particularly for ultra marathon running where you're going slower. Obviously, as you increase your speed for you know up to a 200 meter sprint or something, you're going to be pushing off a lot more, and so you're going to be using a lot more of the arches of the feet. The calves are going to be doing more work. There's more pressure on the Achilles. And so when you are barefoot, it, it does take more, more. Uh, you, you require more development in those parts of the body. Once they're developed it's an advantage uh, to run that way. But if people just try to go barefoot when they've been wearing all their shoes all their life and the muscles kind of get lazy, then uh, you, can, you, know, you can injure yourself being barefoot, going too much barefoot too soon. I remember when I first started wearing five fingers that uh, I went out for a two hour run on, on concrete thinking, oh yeah, I'm fine, you know. And uh, I wasn't fine. <laughs> I developed some um, like tendonitis in the top of my foot from, just from that one run. It took me a couple of months to, to really get that to get rid of that. But I've been wearing these for I do all my ultras in these shoes, running through mountains, running on roads. And I do track training twice a week, like fast running in them. And I have no problems now, but yeah, you just have to go through that respect. What about mental approach? You know, when people first start running, they just bump into this resistance within them. They go on the run and they hear this in the voice that tells them, Don't run, stay right. at home watch television you know it's bad for you you're gonna hurt yourself so it's uh, have, can you give some tips on overcoming that sure uh, there's a I once read an article in a, in a running magazine called the golden mile 
you wake up in the morning, you're tired, you're on, you, you just want all you want to do is stay in bed. It's nice and warm. It's cold outside, and you have all these reasons to not go running, playing playing over in your mind, or I'm sore, I'm too tired, my knees sore, I, I don't want to. And so the temptation to stay in bed is very strong. But you can, they call this the golden mile. You get up and you do a mile of running and then you decide, or walking if you want to walk, you don't, you know, people don't have to run. You can still be healthy and walk. But you do that first mile and then you say, okay, how do I feel? Do I want to rest? Do I want to go back to bed? Because by then you're getting a more accurate answer. You're taking away all the excuses you're out and in nature and you're enjoying the fresh air and it's a whole new day. You've got the nerve energy from, from that sleep that you've just accumulated. So you know, 99 times out of 100, you get, you're going to decide, yeah, I want to, I want to get out and play. Sure. Anyway, Thanks. thank you very much for the interview. I really appreciate it. I'm going to get running. I've got some training to do. I'm going to catch up. Oh, no. Bye. <laughs>